Good morning, friends. Hair's wet because I just got out of a long, hot shower. And why am I telling you that? Because we're going to talk about the water supply for a long, hot shower today here on the North Shore of Lake Chapala. This is the North Shore of Lake Chapala. There's a lot of water out there. Matter of fact, there's more than there was a few days ago. Last night, it rained so much that it raised the level in my pool eight inches. It's overflowing right there. It was this morning. Anyway, you can see water right down there. Two weeks ago, the level of the lake was, the water was way out there. So I don't want to talk about that today. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. So why are we going to talk about the water crisis on the north shore of Lake Chapala today? If you look out there at the lake, it seems like there's water, water everywhere. And then some people say there's not a drop to drink. And why am I talking about that today? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, um, well, three, counting the fact that I committed myself to doing so last week. <laughs> uh, I made a comment a couple of weeks ago when I was on the South Shore uh, with my friend looking at his property that my well was only good for about three minutes at this time of year because the, the water level was so low. Um, and I've gotten a bunch of questions and comments about that. So that's one reason. The other reason is that my friend Jerry Brown made a video a few weeks ago that he ran out of water at his house here in Upper Ahihik and uh, had to dip water out of his swimming pool with a bucket to flush his toilets. That happened to me once about a month ago, but it wasn't because the city ran out of water. It was because my gardener left the hose running accidentally and drained my Tanaco. Um, so I had to wait for the city to start pumping again in order to get water uh, in my uh, roof uh, tank supply, my Tanaco, which is what gives me water and pressure in my house. Well, before we get into the meat of today's video, I want to ask you to not leave me a comment about being environmentally irresponsible because of my long, hot showers. <laughs> Um, I'm actually very environmentally responsible for a number of reasons. Now, first of all, let's talk about my well. I don't actually have a well. I have a 30-foot hole in the ground that goes uh, water level up and down with the level of the lake, and we only use it to water um, our vegetable gardens. The rest of our water usage comes from the city, and uh, I have a water meter. So part of my environmental responsibility has to do with money. I'm allotted 15 meters, cubic meters per month. And if I go over that, which I don't, um, I pay extra. And the reason I don't is because of several conscious decisions. First of all, if you notice a couple of months ago, my grass was all brown and dead looking. And some of it was dead. And it was dead because we didn't use city water to keep the grass green. Um, my washing machine. I have a top-loading washing machine. It can use 30, 40 gallons. But we keep the water level down from 8 or 9 or 10 to 4 or 5. And we run a short cycle of 38 minutes instead of 54 minutes because it uses half as much water. So... Uh, there are some economic reasons that we are, in fact, uh, environmentally conscious. Uh, but let's not forget that um, we live six months uh, a year in an RV where every drop of water is used with conscious thought. When I do dishes in the motorhome, I use less than a gallon of water and I would only do dishes every two or three days. And by habit, I use the same system here in the kitchen at our home in Ahihik. Not because I'm consciously uh, aware of water usage here, but because it's a habit. So anyway, 
don't leave me any comments about being environmentally irresponsible. I do have concerns about the long-term uh, effects of growing population and greater water usage here on the north shore of Lake Chapala. And I'll give you my opinion of how that's going to go in the future towards the end of this video. What else? Uh, oh, about the well. You know, Ahihik and the surrounding towns don't use lake water. Guadalajara uses lake water, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, we have deep wells that draw water out of the aquifer, and the aquifer is not related to the level of the lake. Now, rainwater and the lake do resupply the aquifer to some extent, but it has to do with stuff in five states, not what goes on here on the North Shore of Lake Chapala. And again, that's one of the things we're gonna talk about today. So let's talk about it. What about the water crisis on the North Shore of Lake Chapala? Lake Chapala is the drinking water for Guadalajara, a city of five million. Not exclusively, they have deep wells. I think if I remember correctly about uh, maybe half of the drinking water for that large city, the second largest city in Mexico, uh, comes from Lake Chapala. Lake Chapala is the third largest lake in Latin America and the largest lake in Mexico. And I've lived uh, on the north shore of Lake Chapala, uh, literally. I have a lakefront property and I bought this house, half of it, in 2004. So in December, it will be 20 years that I've watched the level of the lake come and go. And I want to give you some historical perspective to that. And in order to make sure that I wasn't talking through my hat, I've looked up some uh, quotes from um, trusted sources, uh, government sources, uh, scientific studies, um, opinions other than mine over the years, and I want to share some of them with you. This first one is uh, years of continuous drought and the increasing use of the basin's water, mainly for irrigation, has caused the current crisis for Lake Chapala. That was in 1954. Here's the next one. The river basin has reached closure whereby demand for water has outstripped the capacity to replenish and its condition is now critical. That was in the 1980s. Next one. Lake levels are again low due to poor rainfall and the continued over exploitation of the surface and groundwater making it unlikely that the lake will ever recover. That was in the 1990s. In 2001 was my first time here, and a boat ride from the pier in Chapala was to get into the boat, which was on the back of a flatbed truck, which then drove you about a half a mile out to the water, half a mile from the pier, and you drove along the shore. You never got out of the boat, and the boat never got off of the back of the flatbed truck. That was a boat ride in 2001. Um, there was a golf course in uh, Riberas de Pilar on the lake shore. I think it was a nine-hole golf course, and uh, it was, there was room for that. The marina here in La Floresta... Um, I actually got my Suzuki stuck because <laughs> I was driving in and out of <laughs> holes and humps where the marina was with my car. Anyway, uh, the lake when we first came was very, very low. And my next quote is, this water crisis is of a more critical nature. That was in 2003. And then some things happened. The federal government of Mexico made an agreement with five states upriver, that's the Lerma River, 
Well, let me show you a map of how the water gets to Lake Chapala. This is a map of the Lerma River watershed. And right here, that's uh, Lake Chapala. And the Lerma River is the dark blue. And the red outline is the watershed area of the Lerma River. 10% of the replenishment of the lake comes from rainfall and 80% comes from the Lerma River watershed. And in 2003, the federal government of Mexico made a deal with five states to limit the irrigation use of the Lerma River water so that Lake Chapala would be protected because of the drinking water supply for Guadalajara, which is right there. That was in 2003. In 2004, the federales came and started tearing down the fences that were built way out into the what is now lake water, but at that time it was dry land, tearing down the far barbed wire fences because they were going to be uh, dangerous for boaters and swimmers. And um, that's the reason, because they knew that the lake level was going to come up. So in 2004, the lake started rising. In 2006, a hurricane from the uh, uh, Atlantic side, Caribbean actually, and the Pacific side kind of met up there in the Lerma watershed area. And all of a sudden, the water in Lake Chapala rose dramatically. It did cause another problem. Water hyacinth coming out of the river into the lake, and all of a sudden there's this huge problem. We'd get up some mornings and look across the lake and couldn't see any water. It'd be a green carpet eight miles across to the south shore. Well, that's another uh, problem that got resolved and a subject for another video. Today we're talking about the level of Lake Chapala and the water crisis on the north shore of Lake Chapala. Again, it's kind of like, uh, is the lake half full or half empty? I don't make videos about negative things, and I get some comments about that occasionally. They say, well, you're always talking positive about Lake Chapala and Ahihik and retiring in Mexico because you own a property there and you want the value of the property to not diminish. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. But it's not the reason I make videos. The reason I make videos is because it's my retirement hobby. <laughs> anyway, uh, aside from those uh, negative comments and criticisms occasionally, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know, A, I'm not doing this for the money. Uh, B, I try to tell the truth to make sure that uh, I, excuse me, I'm concentrating on a spider who's crawling up the window. I need my brown creeper bird or my hummingbird. They work for me. They come and they take the spiders. And the hummingbirds wind up the um, webs and make nests out of them. But I digress. Um, I make videos because I like doing it and um, I enjoy um, the comments and I enjoy meeting people in person when they say, oh, hey, JC, I watch your videos. That's why I do it and that's what keeps me doing it. Um, so I have no vested interest in giving you anything other than my honest opinion. I don't make up stories to enhance the value of my property. <laughs> I get those comments a lot. Anyway, yeah, I talk positive. I'm a positive person. For me, the glass is always half full of water, and the lake is always half full of water, even at its lowest point. But uh, I want to give you my opinion now and make a prediction for the future. Let's uh, think about this uh, logically. Um, don't want to get into the controversy about global warming, but I think it's uh, now a, an accepted fact that the Earth is warming. 
And as the earth warms, the water and the oceans evaporates faster. And as the air heats up, it can hold more water. And those places that get water on a seasonal basis, like the monsoons here at 5,000 feet, are going to get more water, not less water. You know, a year ago, I was real interested in watching videos about <coughs> Lake Mead by Las Vegas. And uh, all of the, oh, 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 the sky is falling things with uh, 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 Lake Mead and the Colorado River. It's going to dry up and California is going to run out of water. Well... Uh, unintended consequence of global warming, it snowed so much in the Rocky Mountains that Lake Mead is now full of water. And Lake Chapala will be full of water soon as well. Maybe not this year, but it will happen. Over the course of 20 years, it's been within 20 feet of my seawall, and it's been within a mile of my seawall. The lake will come, the lake will go. The water crisis on the north shore of Lake Chapala is something that's fun to talk about to make a YouTube video in order to uh, get some clicks and views. But my honest opinion is that I'm going to keep having my long hot showers. There's another thing that I wanted to mention that I figured out 20 years ago. And one of the reasons that I look for a lakefront property. There's all kinds of controversy about, well, do you want to live up in the mountain with a view or do you want to live in La Floresta with nice wide streets? <clears throat> uh, and there's all kinds of opinions about that. Oh, if you live up in the mountains, there's more scorpions. If you live down by the lake, there's more mosquitoes. Everybody's got an opinion about that. Well, I figured out something and my opinion about the water was this. The city doesn't pump 24-7. It pumps for a few hours basically every day. And uh, that fills up people's alhibes, the underground reservoir that everybody has. And then you have a pump that pumps it up to your roof, a tanaco. Some people have a pressurized system from a pump on the roof. But um, most every house has a tank on the roof for a water supply. And they need that because the city doesn't pump all day long every day. So you have to have a supply on your property in order to have water 24-7. Well, what I figured out 20 years ago uh, was that if you live way up the hill, you're the last one to get water and the first one to run out of it when the city is pumping. And as the water in the system goes down, those of us who are lower have water longer than those of us who are higher. My Tanaka on the roof is lower than half the city. So even when the city stops pumping, because the water's draining out of the system, I'm still getting water pressure here at my house on the roof to fill my Tanaka, while the rest of the city, half of the city above, is running out of water uh, being pumped from the city. Now, they're not running out of water because they have these supplies, the Alhibe and the Tanaka. Anyway, that's what I figured out 20 years ago. It's better to live down here if you're going to have a water problem. And 20 years ago, when I bought this property, there was a water problem. The lake was a mile out there. The federal government uh, agreements with the five states to limit irrigation and maintain the water supply for Guadalajara and Lake Chapala changed all of that. And that hasn't changed back to the old things that I told you about with regard to, oh yeah, the sky is falling in 1954. The sky is falling in the 80s. The sky is falling in the 90s. Well, the sky ain't falling. <laughs> if you're worried about the water crisis on the north shore of Lake Chapala with regard to your property value, or with regard to moving here, or with regard to buying a property here, or with regard to having enough water for your shower. Glass is half full for me. Thanks for watching today. Hey, if 
you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind.